So, uh, does anyone else just love a crock pot? I've had this pot roast in all day. So those are like seasoned onions, carrots, potatoes, some, uh, we actually like to put like soup seasoning, and then the meat is down below. It's just gonna sit there and be delicious. Now it's time to open up the shop. Welcome back everybody to the world's worst fishing. I'm Chris Jones and um, today's video is going to be me pushing my hand pouring boundaries. Uh, so we've done quite a few, um, you know, I would say advanced and intricate techniques on this channel just as we've learned. Um, this one's going to really, really require some effort and a little bit of luck I think to get it right. Um, so I recently made some swim baits for a master airbrush airbrush bait maker okay he's probably uh, the most talented person that I've come across yet with with the airbrush painting crankbaits and hard baits and things like that um, his work is absolutely phenomenal and we're gonna try to hand pour recreate one of his more simple patterns today um, some of the stuff he does is just like wow I mean you know, we, we've all seen really great airbrush work before. Um, his is probably the highest level that I've found. There's all this noise in the background from these bugs, so hopefully that's not too bad. Anyway, the person I'm talking about is TJ Hatfield, okay? So let me pull up his Instagram real fast. Actually, you know what? I'll pull up his Instagram when we're over here on the table so you can get a little bit better look at it. But we're gonna be trying to pour sort of a green crawfish pattern that I saw him paint on one of his crankbaits. And as soon as I saw it, I said, man, that is absolutely killer. It looks like it could be something that could be hand poured. And uh, so we're gonna try it. I have never tried this before, so uh, it should be fun. Hopefully we get a good result. Sometimes uh, you, you try to duplicate something, but what you get doesn't look like it whatsoever. So. You might think it's sort of a failure, but maybe you learned something along the way and maybe your results, although different from the target, look really great and then it's something that you can build upon and expand upon to create other patterns. So, um, like I've always said, there are no wrong colors in bait making, only new colors. So this is it, Hatfield Custom Tackle. And uh, I mean, holy cow. He actually reposted my swim bait, so I'm honored, buddy. Let's just look at some of the stuff that he's done. Let's just play like musical chairs with it here. Oh my Lord. Let's go on to the next one. Ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous. Nice speckled perch up there, ridiculous. Ridiculous. Oh, Jets and Eyes, yeah, he knows what's up. Yeah, I mean, this is Oh yeah, I'm loving that. Yeah, his his work is absolutely insanity. So that's what we're trying to do today is tap into some of this guy's genius. And this is a screenshot of the one that we're trying to do today. Look at this madness. It's sort of a mean green crawfish pattern. And uh, I mean, you could just look at that for days and still not appreciate all of the mastery that went into that. Got our uh, dead-on plastic craw tube here. We're just gonna give it a, a quick little mix in here. You know, I get a lot of questions about mixing plastisol. This is all there is to it. This is a half full five gallon bucket. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I stir it for about 20 seconds with a hand spoon, 20, 30 seconds. And I don't have to stir again today. Now, if I was to come back out here tomorrow, I need to stir it again. You know, if I was to come back out here, maybe maybe uh, 10 hours later, whenever that would be, um, you would probably want to give it a light mixing again. But that's it, plastic is ready to go. We're gonna measure out and start the show. All right, so again, the idea here is like an upside down perch. Instead of pouring the black from the top and dripping it down towards the bottom, we're gonna try to do it the opposite way here from the bottom dripping up towards the top yeah no bueno 
All right, this is gonna take some getting used to because the bottom is a lot more angled. So we just wanna get it, kinda get it down there. And then, yeah, that's probably about as precise as we're gonna be able to do it. Because if, if I look at my example here, that first kind of line that goes up is right up through kind of the gill plate section. So up, up front, and we're just gonna have to do the best that we can. And that's all you can do, but challenging patterns like this are always fun to pour, and the challenge, I think, is good for you. It's going to, uh, it's gonna make you do new things yeah just like that sort of and I think once we get our other skin layers over that pour a bottom color and all that I, I think it actually might look okay so there again the trick here is to get it started there on the bottom right and then we're just letting gravity work its way up. That one didn't go up enough, so we're gonna have to redo that one. But uh, you can already see the challenge I have set for myself here. Like this is not, uh, this is not watermelon red, you guys. Yeah, something like that. We might redo that one, but we'll get one more back here towards the tail. You know, and the temperature of your plastic is very important here. That kind of determines how things are going to run. So, as you can see, it's sort of an upside down perch pattern. And that's immediately what I thought of. Okay, that's how I would even get close to something like this. Now, there's a few things I won't be able to get. You can see, you know, the stenciling here, the bottom of the bait is left clear. This, this tr clear triangle section is gonna have to be black for me. That's really the only way to pour it. Um, I might try one other method, but I think this is how I'm gonna have to do it. So that's basically step one, is just to get our upside down perch. Okay, so I've got all of my uh, black striping done. Now we're gonna build the first color that we're gonna skin. So we're basically about to pour a skin layer on the bottom and it's gonna be sort of this orange bottom here. So, yep, it's gonna be this orange bottom right there. Um, we're gonna do like two drops of orange. Okay, play it safe on the orange. Last time I got a little orange happy. Yeah, I mean, you can see how strong that orange is. So now we just need to lighten it up with some yeller, with some old yeller. They, Dead on Plastics needs to make a color called Old Yeller. Yeah, that's much better right there. So if I just kind of look at the overall hue of that and overall hue of that, we still need some more yellow in it. But I think we can get something close without, you know, obviously having the exact same paint that he used. Yeah, there's parts of that right there that don't look bad. But I'm going to stop there because the more yellow I add, the thicker it's going to get. And we still want um, sort of the correct transparency here. So in order to kind of get the splotchy look, I'm going to add flake. So I'm going to add some large flake. Some large black flake. And then we're going to add some small flake. 0.015. And we're just going to kind of see where this takes us a little bit. You know, that, that right there in itself is very crawfishy. So, you know, that will kind of serve as our black splotchy look. What I mean by that is some of these kind of random black splotches all throughout. However, we need to add some small green flake because it really looks like that's what he's using. Okay. And this is just one of the skin layers. We're gonna do the same thing as this, but, but with the green layer, of course. Yeah, so that's got some of that little green flake. We're gonna add a little bit more. I, I can already say I love how I think this green flake 
is going to look with that green overall hue of the bait. So that's what we're going to do for that color right there. All right, now here comes the tough part because I really don't want to mess this up, but I only want to pour this orange skin from here on down the bottom part. I don't want to pour it in the center or up top. I want to do my best to keep it towards the bottom of this bait. So basically like this and a little bit more down there because I want it to go into the head some. Alrighty. Yeah. Just like that. Okay. So I'm going to set that down. Yeah. Okay. That's exactly what I wanted to do because if we look at our target here, you can see most of that orange is, is on the bottom. There's a little bit on the top too, but that right there is an awfully good start. So uh, let me grab my glove again. All right. And let's see if we can do it <laughs> with any sort of success on this one as well. Again. Yeah. Sort of just let it fill in some of the nose there and back up. You know, maybe tilt it this way to get you know, a little bit of droop going. But for the most part, that I think is what we want to do to have the highest hope of success. All right, we have all those done and uh, I'm really excited to see these now. I wasn't sure if I was really gonna like it as we are progressing, but I'm actually feeling pretty good about these. I think we can get a pretty cool looking bait and uh, now we're gonna build the green color. Okay, we need green. So we're gonna do one of my growing, this is growing into one of my favorite colors, this Char Lime from Dead On Plastics. I think it's probably the exact shade of green that I want. And once we flake it up and add the flakes that we need, I think we'll be okay. But until then, I'm not sure. But we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna add our, our two sizes of black flake just to give our splotchy look about it. So that, that's the 0 .062. And putting in this dark flake will actually darken the entire hue of the green. So it won't be quite as dark anymore as the original uh, chartreuse lime colorant by itself. Where is, okay, here it is. Yeah, there's my little, little black flake. Gosh dang it, I love black flake. It just helps everything. You can put it in almost everything and it makes it better. But we're gonna add a little bit more of it, I think, to, to the green side. Really gonna throw some in there. Let's get a little closer. Yeah, that'll also change the hue of it. Yeah, so what started as super bright like that, you can see now is a much darker shade of green in general. So I'm just gonna drizzle some out and see how it looks as a skin layer. I think it needs to be a little bit thicker actually, more pigment in general. So we're gonna add a little bit more, stir it up. So I don't want my skin layer to be quite that see-through. I want it to have a little bit more, more backbone behind it, which that already does. You can see that one. You can see more of the table color beneath it. This one looks a little bit more green. Okay, moment of truth. Let's try not to ruin all the good work we've done so far. We basically just want to start up here and kind of fill in most of the cavity with this green. So again, some more skin pouring here. Yeah. On up into the nose. Beautiful. Yeah, it's like when you look at it, you, you start to see where things are going here. And uh, I could not be happier with the way this is coming right along. That looks absolutely killer. Now it's just a question, do I mess it up when I actually pour the inside body colors? You know, because that can still ruin things for us. Pour the wrong body color and it makes your skins look off. Or it just doesn't look good. You know, you have to kind of think what color is the tail portion going to be from the top color filling in the tail so but look at that though 
So if we just look at the profile of that already, just from the belly or the underside of the mold, now there's eh, quite a bit of similarity already. Look at that. Okay, they are all done. Now we're gonna close up the molds and we're gonna build a belly color of sorts. It's just gonna be a very see-through white pearl um, because a see-through body color will enhance the colors here. They won't really change it. If I was to pour a really dark body color, it would darken up my skins and kind of throw off the tone and I don't wanna do that. So we're gonna shut these molds. We're gonna fire up the griddle and start pouring the actual bodies. All right, so now we're gonna pour this belly color and I basically have the molds still cold, okay? I'm touching them. Um, so the idea being, I want to sort of cold pour these because I want to be able to pour this pearl belly as high up the cavity as I can without it spilling over into the tail. We're actually gonna tail pour these as well. So the tails are gonna be poured in black, but the top of the tail is going to be that orange crawfish color from, from the bottom skin layer. So, we're basically doing that right there. Okay, I decided not to pour just the bottom of the tails black because it really wasn't gonna match up well. So I'm just gonna fill in these tops with, the, uh, with that orange color from the bottom. I think it will tie in with the bottom. And on the example, the tops of his crankbaits had sort of that orange theme again. So that's what we're gonna do there. And again, these molds are not super hot because I want this flake to suspend decently. I don't want it all to just sink right to the bottom. So I'm essentially cold pouring these molds. The molds are hot, but they're not to temperature yet. So that should let this plastic set up fairly quickly, which will keep the flake suspended there and the tails. And then we can um, turn the molds up and then basically bond everything together without uh, melting it to the point where all the flake sinks to the bottom. That's the hope anyway. That's, that's the idea. So yeah, I hope these turn out. I've put a lot of effort into this one today. And uh, you know, I, I haven't done a step yet to where I was like, ooh, that might be kind of iffy. So, so far I think, oop, so far I think so good. And uh, yeah, we'll meet you back when these are ready. Okay, la da da, no drum roll, no big reveal. There's what we have. And I have to say, that's actually really good. Um, so let me, let me get out the picture here. Oops, 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 oops. So there's what we were going for again. And here's what we have. Right off the bat, there's too much of the orange. I wasn't really sure what to do with the tail. Um, and I'm still really not sure what to do. So I'm gonna do these again. I'm not gonna show you the process, but I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do differently. I'm gonna make the black a little bit thicker. I'm gonna try to pour the black a little bit thinner as a whole, and then especially that bottom orange skin, I'm gonna not let it go as far up the cavity. It's gonna be thinner and more towards the bottom, and then I'm gonna use more of the green to skin further up towards the top. You can see on these baits, the green skin, I kind of stopped it, you know, a quarter inch before the top of the bait. I'm probably just gonna skin it all the way out to the top and then just have the orange coming out the tail section. So I'm gonna do these again. Okay, so here are the next rounds and you can see I did just a few things different. The black obviously is um, thicker, okay? So it's more opaque, it's, it's more enriched. The orange bottom layer, skin layer, is a lot thinner. So if we look, you can kind of see there's a lot more orange on the bottom. Then I actually thickened up the green and then poured more of the green. So let's hope these work out just a smidge better. Okay, second attempt. Let's see how they did. Drum roll, please. Okay, let's take a look. Hopefully it'll come out the right side. Nope, 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 nope. Uh, okay, well, 
it's gonna have to go oh man so much better look at that and I did the little black tip on the tail which I like I don't know if it's necessarily better than if I had left it um, more of that orange but I definitely like the fact that we added more green Let's see if we can get it closer we added more green we thickened up the green and we poured more of a uh, comprehensive skin it covers more of the bait I like that we thickened up the black and kind of enhanced the contrast there and uh, I, I kind of like how the black tail kind of ties it in if you look at it from that angle so yeah I think that is a success you guys let's uh, let's get out this other one here get out one and then there's one more after this of course but yes that really yeah i think that kind of encompasses the look that we wanted i think rather nice um let's kind of get a shot there of them and then look at our example again if i can uh find, find it on my phone come on come on yeah super cool there it is. I think that's about as good as I can pour it um, in a soft plastic. So, not bad for a second attempt. Okay, and we just happen to have the perfect eyes for these. These are Jetson eyes. Emerald tree boa with the pearlescent white background in 10 millimeter. So we're going to throw those on and we are done. Okay, please enjoy these glamour shots. Yeah. Here's another nice little angle of it on the mold. I tell you, I'm actually really glad I did the tails in black. I think it's sort of a nice accent to the black striping. Especially like if you look at it long ways. Get that in focus. Yeah, I think having the black tail really fills out that side of the bait. Yeah, what do you guys think? And how cool are those Jetson eyes? Definitely pick some of those up if you're going to uh, pour anything with green in it. Super, super, super cool. So, yeah. Please let me know in the comments below how you think we did and which version you liked better. Oop. There is the first version right there. So, we'll do a little eh, compare and contrast. Forgot how zoomed in I was. Sorry, everyone. Yeah, I'm definitely liking the second version better. It's just a little bit better poured. You can see my black didn't splotch up on the bottom as much. Or uh, pull up on the bottom as much. And it just has better contrast. So, yep. I'm super happy with it, y'all. Hopefully, y'all have enjoyed just look at how well those eyes work. They match so perfectly. As soon as I uh, knew I was doing this color, I uh, ran to my eye drawer and I, I hoped I had enough of those left. And those were my last six. So I had just enough for these. So yeah. Really, really cool. I hope y'all have enjoyed today's video. And uh, please let me know in the comments below how you think we did.